it going everyone yeah that's right another turntable <laughs> this will be the third one and like I said I have over in my building there's probably another 15 15 to 20 turntables over there that I need to uh, continue to go through uh, this one a little better this is a Technics SL D30, another direct drive automatic turntable system. Uh, this one has the speed adjustment, your or your pitch adjustment, excuse me, on this one. Your speed is your 33 or 45. Little funky feeling. Uh, we have repeat on or off. Repeat is uh, if you turn repeat on, it goes all the way over. Instead of returning and shutting down, it'll come all the way back and then restart the album. That is your peak peat and repeat. Cueing, uh, you can move your cueing is usually where you can, yeah, you put your needle over, your tone arm over, stylus over to the song you want, and and then you lower your lower the needle down with your cueing. Start and stop. Pretty basic. But uh, Techniques is a is a lot better brand. Um, we'll get into it here in a little bit. This one uh, we have some work to do with the with the dust cover and hinges. This one you can see both of the both of the tabs on the dust cover are busted off. Uh, I have one hinge here that's snapped in half and we have this one here that is cracked so someone was pretty pretty rough with this one trying to open it. I probably the lid probably was up and somebody bent it tried bending it back and it, it snapped everything off broke everything up uh, this is the way I got it this one I've had since last summer I picked this one up at the auction as well where I, you know, I buy quite a few of my turntables because usually I can get them pretty reasonable. We have our 45 adapter and it actually is branded Techniques. So I'm sure that's the original. Uh, these are more of a high end, the Techniques, uh, than other ones that I. I get in and work on you know I get a lot of the middle of the road I have some uh, top end turntables and then I have some some lower ones you know like a Sony and you know just the those ones that are in the uh, brown uh, faux pas wooden case and, and that I have a couple of those that we'll get into because uh, you know not everybody wants to spend the money for a real good one they just want one that they can listen to some records with uh, not everybody just gets into the high-end stuff. As long as it works, they're happy. But techniques. Uh, let's see, this one. Same thing, no needle. But we got a brand new needle for it. We don't have to worry about belts because it's a direct, another direct drive, so there's no belts on this one. Now, a little, a little history it's history lesson time folks let's get into the history classroom uh, let's see history techniques was introduced as a brand name for premium loudspeakers marketed domestically by Matt Schitza. oh god in 1965 uh, if you're familiar with my channel Matt Schitza is the monitor the built monitors as well and that was in our time soldiers cabinet but that wasn't the original cabinet for time soldiers I can't I think uh, Zeno I think was the original game that was in that anyway it had the match Schitza in it and that was the one we had some fireworks going on in the back of it uh, the name came to wider uh, the name came to wider prominence with the international sales of the direct drive turntables. 
the first direct drive turntable was invented by uh, now some of these names I'm gonna probably butcher uh, Shuatsai Obata an engineer at Matshitsa now Panasonic based in Osaka Japan it eliminated belts and in, instead employed a motor direct drive platter on which the vinyl record rests. It is a significant, significant advancement over older drive belt turntables which are unsuitable for turn a turn tableism. Huh. Okay. Have to look that word up. Since they have a slow startup time and are prone to wear and tear and breakage which are the belt drive turntables as the belt would uh, break from back spinning or or scratching in 1969 Matshitsa launched Ob Obata's invention as the SP-10 the first direct drive turntable on the professional market in 71 Matshitsa released the Techniques SL-1100 for the consumer market due to its long motor durability for no, due to its strong motor, durability, and fidelity. God, I'm having a hard time reading today. It was adopted by early hip-hop artists. The SL-1100 was used by the influential DJ Cool Herc for the first sound system he set up after immigrating from Jamaica to New York City. It was followed by the SL-1200. Now a lot of you are going to be familiar with the SL-1200, the most influential turntable. It was developed in 1971 by a team led by Suachi Obata at Matshitsa, which then released it onto the market in 1972. It was adopted by New York City hip-hop DJs such as Grand Wizard Theodore and Afrika. Bomb, yeah, mm -hmm. in the 1970s, as they experimented with the SL 1200 decks, they developed scratching techniques when they found out that the motor would continue to spin at the correct RPM even if the DJ wiggled the record back and forth on the platter. <laughs> as the upgraded SL 1200 MK2. It became a widely used turntable by G DJs, a robust, robust machine. The SL1200 MK2 incorporated a pitch control mechanism, or vari vary speed, and maintained a relatively constant speed with a low var variability, which provide popular with DJs. The SL1200 series remained the most widely used turntable in DJ culture through the 2000s. The SL1200 model often considered the industry standard turntable continued to evolve with the M3D series followed by the MK5 series in 2003. Despite being originally created to market their high-end equipment by the early 80s Techniques was offering an entire range of equipment from entire level to and entry level to high level. Man I told you I'm having a hard time today. Despite, despite being originally created to market their high-end equipment by the early 80s, Techniques was offering the entry range of equipment for entry level and high speed. God, deja vu. I think I already read that. In 1972, Techniques introduced the first auto-reverse system in a cassette deck in its Techniques RS-277US. And I am currently working on a and an RS B48 I think is what that one is I'm working on now and in 1973 it introduced the first three-headed recording technique in a cassette deck the Techniques RS 279 US uh, the one I'm working on is also an auto reverse if you're not familiar with auto reverse uh, when a when a cassette goes to the end and stops playing when it goes to the end, instead of shutting down, what it does is the head turns over and then it starts playing the other side. So you never have to take the cassette out and turn it over. 
1976, Techniques introduced two belt drive turntables for the mass market, the SL20 and SL23. The principal difference between the two models was the additional features of semi-automatic operation in the SL23, along with an, an adjustable speed control with built-in strobe light. Uh, they offered technical uh, specification and featured rival, much more expensive turntables, including well-engineered S-shaped tone arms. Oh, yeah, I remember those too. Those, I think I have a few of those. Uh, with tracking weight and anti-skate adjustment. At the time, they were introduced the SL20 and SL23 were sold for 100 to 140 respectively. Set a new performance standard for inexpensive turntables. The Techniques brand was discontinued in 2010, but reappeared at the 2014 German Consumer Electronics Trade Fair, IFA, in January 2016, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the Techniques SL1200, came back with the Techniques SL. 1200 G cool so we didn't lose them and let's see when did when did I say they came back yeah 2014 2016 that's about the time that um, vinyl started gaining popularity again if you're not familiar with that and a lot of people still think vinyl is a hell of a lot better than digital cassette deck cassettes or CDs uh, the, let's see, we are working also on the RS, yeah, B48R tape deck. That video, you may have already have seen it. So I'm going to kind of mix some of this stuff in. So before we even plug this in and put the needle on it and try that, I'm going to do like I normally do. We're going to flip this over and take the, take its bottom off. And... Do a little servicing, cleaning, and make sure everything's all copacetic before we turn it on and try and play a record. So I'll get you set up and we'll get this tore down and see what we can get into with it. Alright, let's, let's get this guy's butt off. Maybe it's a girl, I don't know. We'll get her butt off. Uh, I'm putting the dust cover back on because I don't want it laying on the tone arm and that. So hopefully. Now most of these, you know, I've never I've never had a lot of this stuff apart, but you know as long as if you're not scared to take something apart, then by all means take it apart, take a look see what you can see you know I don't know if it works or not I have never plugged this in since I got it Aha. they're hiding back two more hiding back here and I'm not saying that if you pick up a used turntable that this is what you should do I do it because when I sell them, I want to know that it has been serviced and there should be less problems. Now granted, I'm sure you're going to have problems at some point because of just being, being older. And just on a quick quick inspection, you know, you can see everything. Everything looks okay in here. Just some old grease that needs to be cleaned up. And we'll put re-grease it. We've got a couple two two fuzzes. We'll test both of the fuzzes before we put the bottom back on it. our turntable motor right down in there a 
little transformer. Same as always, most of this stuff is all, uh, you have the transformer in it, you have your line coming in, your 110, and mostly all this stuff converts to 12 volt and then run that way. You have a little power supply here, there's a little, uh, there's an IC chip down in there, you know, uh, not sure. Uh, you don't really need to know how all this works if you're just servicing it or what all this stuff does. All you want to do is make sure that your mechanism's clean and and greased so it can move freely. Kind of like that book by IP Freely. Only we want this to move freely. So same as always, uh, I'll get my alcohol and there's the alcohol, and we'll get a, a dabber on a stick, and start cleaning up some old grease. And I tell you this every time, you know, and I, I repeat myself a lot when I'm working on this stuff because it's, you know, something that you should know that you know, over time, grease gets stiff, gummy, uh, especially if the the grease is a, a has quite a bit of a a paraffin base to it. And the paraffin, after a while, kind of seizes up. Well, it doesn't really seize up; it just gets. gets gummy and sticky uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember Quaker State motor oil uh, I tell you this little story every time too that Quaker State always always got gummy after sitting in a motor uh, they always run quiet because they were the, the paraffin always coagulated inside the motor Quaker State always claimed that it was it was good for the motor because it kept it quiet and over the over years of use it was it made it quiet and motors lasted longer because of their oil well, if you've ever had to tear one apart that used Quaker State it was nasty But then Quaker State moved to Texas, and I think they stopped putting paraffin. I don't know if it, they actually added paraffin or if it was from our Pennsylvania oil that's uh, pretty... Pennsylvania crude oil is pretty um, dirty. It's a, it's a heavy, heavy crude, not a light. And all of our oil is not... not under pressure in the ground so they have to pump it has to be pumped out not it doesn't just blast out of the ground Ooh man is that that's nasty there's my little my little poker God that is that is really funky there I don't know if you can, you can't see that, but right down in here is really funky. I mean, that that's like really heavy grease that's in there, and it's stiff. Even if you don't get it all, uh, you get it. You get as much as you can 
and then when you put when you put some new grease on it it'll help help loosen up the the old grease as well as it moves back and forth it'll it'll definitely loosen up because you're putting some thinner stuff on it and you don't have to go nuts with it light coating is usually more than enough Because the more grease you put on it, the, the more it'll pick up dirt. And you don't want it collecting dirt. And like I said, if you you know you don't have to do this, I just do it because I know then when it when it leaves it will it's serviced and it will probably last longer you know you can you buy one you can you're more more than happy more than welcome to to just plug it in and and see if it works you know, with me, I don't care right at the moment if it's working or not. We're going to service it first. And then we'll test it. I do it to all my, all my equipment. I would rather know firsthand that it, everything is free before I go plugging it in and turning it on and breaking something because it was all gummy. You know, it's just a matter of greasing every every moving part that you see everything that's uh, normally if it's rub, rubbing on metal it needs greased or oiled if it's uh, nylon on nylon normally you don't have to grease or oil nylon on nylon unless somebody else has already done it and now it's collecting has goobers all over it and it it's hanging up and whatever you do don't use WD-40 uh, WD-40 is very highly flammable if you have excess uh, WD-40 laying in here and you have some on your board here you plug it in turn it on next thing you know you have smoke roaring out of it I use PBR grease contact disc grease this is uh, what I use on my electrical mechanical grease this is what I use on my pinball machines uh, it's perfect because it's dielectric grease it's an insulator uh, plus it conducts electricity so you can you can figure that out on your own I'm not gonna go there I, you put it on contacts and it'll conduct electricity through contacts but if you have it laying across contacts it won't conduct electricity across two contacts so, so there you have it all right looks good not much to it uh, let's see meter 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 where's my meter I said meter I know there's a joke in there there it is, but we'll leave that one alone. Test a couple of fuses here. That one's good, and that one's good. All we're doing is just checking continuity through the 
through the fuse, make sure that it's not blown. So because once we put the lid and put the bottom back on it, then we don't have to take it off and check a fuse because it's not working. We know the fuse is good. We know we got everything uh, cleaned and lubed. Lubed up. Hate them dry. Got to have lube. Uh, let's see this. That little potentiometer. Had problems with the potentiometer the last last turntable we did. That one, I, I'll leave that alone. Uh, if, it, if it needs cleaned, we'll, clean, we'll take the bottom back off of it and clean it. It's just a mess when you clean them with the contact cleaner. That one's a little different potentiometer too. Okay. Now we'll put the bottom back on it and we can flip it over and we'll be ready to to plug it in and hook it up. Hardest part on this one is going to be fixing those hinges. I uh, got a couple of ideas how to fix them. Hopefully, plan A works and we don't have to go to plan B. And remember, these, these screws are only going into plastic. So you don't have to go all Hercules on them. Just down and snug. hooked back up. Yeah. See, red into white and white into red, right? Oh, no? Okay. Let's undo this twisty on here. Just basic figure eight. Come on, come on, boys. All right, and I'll get it hooked up, and then we will test it out and see what we got. All right, I got our went ahead and got it hooked up. Now let's let's see what we can do here. We need a needle, stylus. Excuse me. You have to call it by the correct term. There's our new stylus. It is a. Uh, diamond needle 718-D7 that was the one that said it would fit this back side yeah. NPS-1071 uh, used uh, let's see Panasonic techniques uh, techniques uh, linear tracking turntable so we have a this is a direct drive, not a linear tracking, but it said it would fit. And these are the same as the other ones. They just slide in place once you get them lined up. Yep, that one is round. Okay. 
that doesn't want to doesn't seem like it wants to slide up on there I don't know if this is a plug-in or if it has the wire there's a little set screw here but I'm not gonna I don't want to take that apart just yet I may have been down too far There we go. Perfect. And we'll save the, this is a little protector so when you're not using it it protects your stylus. This is awful. Doesn't seem like there's much weight. Let me. We'll try that. May have to adjust that in a little bit more. Now the cueing. This should lift it and lift it up. And that should, yep, puts it back down. 33. Oh, what are we going to put on there today? We got some Molly Hatchet, ZZ Top, Pearl Jam. How about some, how about some John Cougar, Melon Camp, Scarecrow? I think I have two, two albums. Two of this. Yep, two copies. Uh, let's see. What oh, we got? Rain on the Scarecrow. Uh, this doesn't have an on and off. Killed Gabby days after her death. That's what I thought. That's not going down far enough. a little more weight forward. All right, let me let me see what's going on. We got something going on here that's just not right. Okay, sorry about that. Somebody stopped by. Uh, okay, first of all, I, I've noticed two things wrong. There was a big hump in our record, and I had the, the mat down in the wrong place. The other problem I see is... As soon as I turn on my, as soon as I turn on my receiver, the turntable starts going. 
Now there's no on off switch on this, it should all be controlled by your arm. So with it sitting in the home position, this shouldn't even be running. And we have to figure out what what shuts it off. And I still well, let me make sure I'm hooked up in the right place. Yep, phone up. Just checking myself, making sure I got it hooked up in the right place. Now, because see, you shouldn't. You should be able to. You know, it should shut off when it's in the home position. Uh, that did take out the Humpty Doo. But we're still... Still no... No music. I mean, we're not getting anything. We're getting a hum. And even when you should be able to run your finger now it just something's not right should be able to run your finger across that needle and hear it come through your speakers through your receiver and it, it's still not tracking properly like there's still not enough weight but we need to figure out why it's not shutting down when it goes to the home position you know, I've never seen them where you, you just turn turn your receiver on and start spinning. I mean, I could put on a, a radio and, and your turntable is sitting there spinning. No, it should shut off when it comes over to the home position. And and it could be whatever is not shutting the player down, the turntable down could also be also be the thing that is um, blocking the signal coming from our needle to our receiver so I guess it's time to take the bottom back off of this and see if we can't figure out what's going on and I will put the put our little protector on Lock down our needle. Okay, you've already seen me take this take this apart once, and I'll so I'll go ahead and flip it over, take it apart, and then we'll take a look at it and see if we can't figure out what the hell is going on. All right, we got a little little micro switch right here, and it's depressed right now. No, it's not sad. Uh, we have our red, yellow, and brown coming off of it. Our yellow, one yellow goes to our little uh, power distribution board here, along with the red. And the other yellow comes up to the this main board. This main board right up here. So that little micro switch is probably what breaks the power. Now our um, stylus, yeah, the wires come off of our stylus, go directly to our out here. And I do see that uh, there is a ground. I didn't think this one had a ground, but this takes a takes a funky ground. We may have to run a rig up a ground to come off of here to go to our receiver that could be one of our problems why it's not 
why we're not getting any um, signal to our receiver. So first of all, what we need to do is somehow we need to get, uh, let me there we go. We need to see if that is our on off. See that should turns it off and on. There we go, I'll get that. Now did that? I am thinking that's our on and off. With it depressed, it should be on. And then somehow, there's no real way, we got, no real way to test it unless I can get everything hooked up. And let's see if we can't reach in here and Yep, that's pretty free. What the hell? Let's see if we can get see if we can get some electroshock therapy. Uh, let me. I need something besides this felt because I don't want it this picking up anything. Let me let me see if I can find something else to put this on. Okay, I got it set on a. on a piece of cardboard and I need to un ooh, unlock that tone arm just in case when I turn it on it wants to eject or something. Yep, there she goes. Goes over. Okay, right there is where it should be shut off. Now let's, let's see if we can turn that off. And that does. That's what turns off the that little arm with that micro switch. I don't know if you can see. Let me... Okay. There, you can see the turntable. see the turntable moving. Now if I turn off this little micro switch, it stops. Now we have to figure out what trips that. What trips this little lever here? Let me shut it off and lock it down so we can I don't like putting a whole lot of pressure on that. Let me set it back down in the 
dust cover. That's better. I feel better about that. Okay. So this is our little lever here. Now what trips that? What is gummed up that is not right now it should be off aha there it is uh, we got some ouch we got something really gummed up down inside here let me get you down come on down okay here's the little leather I'm talking about right here this is what turns on that micro turns off and on that micro switch right now it's on now this is off this is in the off position so it should be that switch should be open like so now what if I take and move this white and see that all moves and that's what turns it off and then back on so we have a problem up in here that something is all gummed up and won't turn it off I'm not gonna say this is gonna cure our uh, no signal problem but let's at least get it to shut off when it should shut off um, I'm gonna you're gonna be in the way so I'm just gonna get in there and see how much of that I can get cleaned out of there and see what's going on it may still have something to do with with that micro switch but I doubt I think we may still have a problem with our ground or wrong needle wrong stylus so first first things first let me see if I can get this loosened up so it's working okay I got that freed up you can see now now it'll turn it off and on. I'm still not saying that's going to cure our uh, no audio either, but it still could be that we need need a ground. But yeah, all I did was um, take a little bit of my contact cleaner and put that. Uh, underneath here and a little bit under and I just started working it back and forth until it all that grease uh, broke down and got smooth again but like I said I'm not gonna say that's gonna cure no volume so what we will do is now put put the bottom on with a couple of screws if I can find my screwdriver probably buried it all right let me throw a couple screws in it and then we'll go from there all right now I, I got the power on and you can see it's not turned on we move it over now it turns on we move it back and it shuts off now when it turns on we should have some volume but nothing we still don't have any no signal I can hear my receiver humming alright let's shut everything down pull that needle off it looks okay Okay. 
it's not even going up in. Push. Bound and determined to ruin this needle. have volume. Push start. I did that was my 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 screw up the little the little tube when I put that needle up on the little tube went underneath the needle I I don't know if I can show you what the hell I did or not let's turn that off up underneath here there's a, a little tube that slides up inside the the car the the head here when I put it on that little tube missed and went underneath <laughs> and I didn't even notice it you know because I didn't stand on my head to see what the hell I what was going on but now it is I got it put in where it belongs and now it now it's working thank God it didn't ruin the needle so I'm gonna play with this a little bit I, I'll uh, play the album and see what it does make sure everything's working and it's tracking like it should and then we have to tackle that dust cover yeah. 